Good evening all. Welcome to this new session that is Science in Radiology Set 4. Uh, thanks to all my subscribers who have supported my channel and recently our channel has got the Radiology Awards 2022 uh, in Global Education Services by JCA Seminars Private Limited. Please do subscribe, share and please do nominate me and my channel for the JCA 2023 Radiology Awards. Coming to the first case, here you can see this is the gallbladder which is filled with sludge and which is distended and it is causing indentation and displacement of the anteroabdominal wall. Here you can see these uh, arrows will just indicate the distension and displacement of the anteroabdominal wall. So this is typical tensile gallbladder fundus sign which is nothing but ga the gallbladder bulges and distorts the anteroabdominal wall and it is a feature of acute cholecystitis. So remember tensile gallbladder fundus sign in acute cholecystitis. Next sign here you can see typically the here you can see this is the duodenum and the jejunum they typically are duodenum and the jejunum are coiled uh, and they are not crossing the midline so this is a case of uh, corkscrew sign so this is a corkscrew corkscrew sign seen in midgut valves which is nothing but the distal duodenum and the proximal jejunum here you can see this is the distal duodenum and the proximal jejunum are nothing but coiled and resemble the corkscrew appearance and they do not cross the midline and they do not cross the midline. So these are nothing but these loops twist in a short small bowel mesentery resulting in characteristic core screw appearance in case of midgal valvulus. So this is the typical core screw appearance. So remember core screw appearance or core screw sign in midgut valvulus. Next this is a other case where this is from a journal. I have given the source of the journal below. Here typically you can see uh, this is the sternum and these are the nothing but the sternoclavicular joints there are erosions noted in the sternum and even erosions also noted in the sternoclavicular joint and there is increased uptake in the sternum and the sternoclavicular joints on bone scans so what is this sign called so this is typically called as bullhead sign in sappho so what is this bullhead sign this bullhead sign typically so you can see this is that uh, sternal this is that uh, resembles the head of the sternum and these both resemble the horns of the bull so this volo and increase uptake on the nuclear scans resemble the bullhead. So this bullhead, typically bullhead sign is seen in Sappho of the sternoclavicular joints. Here you can see there is sclerosis of the sternum and the medial clavicles and erosions of the sternoclavicular joint and the increased uh, uptake on scintigraphy. So what is this Sappho? Sappho is nothing but synovitis, acne, pustulosis, hyperostosis and osteitis syndrome. So remember bullhead sign in Sappho. Next case here you can see this is the vertebral artery Doppler. Normally the vertebral artery Doppler there will be peak systolic forward by diastolic. But here you can see uh, this is the normally so the here there is a normal systolic uptake is interrupted and there is a second systolic uptake at the end of the uh, systole and at the beginning of the diastole. So this is nothing but called bunny waveform sign. What is this bunny waveform sign? The flow pattern of the left vertebral artery shows a sharp decline during the mid-systole. Here you can see this is the sharp midline decline in the mid-systole and subsequent there is the rounded second systolic peak. So there is a decline during the mid systole and the uh, sharp second systolic peak. Both these resemble a rabbit. So this is the rabbit in profile view. So remember bunny wave form sign in subclavian steel syndrome. Next here you can see um, there are two hemichords. Normally there is a single spinal cord but here you can see there are two hemichords and separated by a small fibrous raphae or fibrous septum. Uh, this is that fibrous raphae or fibrous septum which is dividing the cord into two hemichords. So this is a classical case of split cord malformation 2. So but what is the sign called? Most of the people will know this is split cord malformation 2 but the sign is nothing but called Martin sign. Uh, this is Martin sign because the two hemichords are enclosed in the thecal sac. The wall of the thecal sac resembles the face of the Martin and that uh, this here you can see this is the wall of the thecal sac resembles the face and the two hemichords resembles the eyes of the uh, eyes of the Martin. So this is face of Martin sign in split cord malformation. Here you can see this is the uh, two hemichords and this is the face of Martin sign. Clearly I will zoom it. Here you can see these are the two hemichords and this is the fibrous raphae or fibrous septa dividing the uh, hemi, uh, spinal cord into two hemichords. So these two hemichords resembles the face of the Martin. So remember Martin sign in split cord malformation too. 
next case here you can see uh, this is the popliteal fossa and this is the case of baker cyst but what is the sign called most of the people will know this is baker cyst but what is this sign called this sign called nothing but the speech bubble sign or talk bubble sign this is related to this is related to this is the uh, neck of the neck of the cyst which communicates with that of the synovial joint space and this communicates with that of the cystic component so this cystic component along with the neck resembles the speech bubble so this is that speech bubble so remember speech bubble sign or speech talk bubble sign in case of baker cyst next uh, what is this sign this is a classical case of scurvy where you can see these are the pelican spurs and this is the typical Wimberger ring sign. So there is, what is this Wimberger ring sign? Wimberger ring sign or Wimberger sign refers to the circular calcification. Here you can see this is the circular calcification around the osteoporotic epiphyseal center, which is classically seen in scurvy and which is the result of bleeding. So I want to make you know that Wimberger ring sign or Wimberger uh, ring are seen in scurvy whereas Wimberger sign or Wimberger corner sign refers to localized bilateral metaphyseal destruction in proximal tibias and it is pathognomonia of congenital syphilis. So this is that Wimberger corner sign where you can see these are the bilateral uh, this is nothing but the metaphyseal destruction typically seen in proximal tibia in bilateral tibias in case of congenital syphilis. So remember Wimberger ring sign in scurvy whereas Wimberger sign or Wimberger corner sign in congenital syphilis. Both these uh, terms are uh, coined by Hans Wimberger who is an Australian pediatrician. During his lifetime he was mistakenly assumed to be a radiologist in learned journals also due to his expertise in radio teaching pediatric radiographs. However, he has no training in the radiology. So this is typical Wimberger ring sign in scurvy. These are, you can, these are all the links where you can follow my channel in the uh, Twitter and the Facebook and even the Telegram. Thank you all.